Wildlife photography can be hugely rewarding. When you finally get that shot, when you nail it, oh, 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 it feels so good. But you don't always have to go traipsing miles through forests and mountains and hills to find those creatures to photograph. You can photograph creatures that are local to you. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about why you should do that, how you should do that. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to the Tutorial Tuesday, where each week, each and every Tuesday, we bring a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, we're talking about why you should photograph local wildlife, as well as, you know, going off and getting those majestic beasts, and how you can photograph local wildlife. Now, what I'm really talking about when I say local wildlife are creatures that are local to you. So maybe they're just in a series of bushes or trees near where you live. Maybe they're in your garden. Maybe they're in a local park or a local pond. These are all creatures that realistically we all live amongst, even if we're not always aware that they're there. Now, we're gonna start off with why you should photograph these creatures. There's a few different reasons. First of all, this is a great way to practice wildlife photography. Whether it's birds or whether it's fast moving subjects, subjects like maybe a squirrel in a local park. These are great subjects to practice your tracking, using the right settings, and actually nailing those shots. Because if you are out deep in a forest, if you're trying to track deer or you're trying to track you know, birds in flight that maybe you only have one or two chances to actually photograph, you wanna make sure you know exactly what you're gonna do when that moment arises. And being able to practice on local small birds or squirrels or something like that, can really help when you do have those other moments. I think it's also important to look at the life around us as well. So without wanting to get too philosophical about it, I think it can be great to actually bring some attention to some of the local creatures that live around us. For example, there's a series of bushes and trees probably no more than 100 yards away from where I live. And every time I walk past there with the dogs, I always pause for a moment because when you first look at it, it is an unremarkable stretch of bushes. But when you stop and you stare at it for a moment, you start to notice there's a handful of birds just sort of dotted around. And the longer you wait, the more birds you notice. And there are just so many of them. All small birds, so I'm no bird watcher, but I'm guessing things like sparrows, starlings. You start to notice a robin, maybe a blue tit floating around. And you just notice that there are actually dozens of them throughout this stretch of bushes. It's something I imagine a huge number of people walk past every day, but maybe don't even realize or notice the beauty of the life in those bushes. And I think it can be a great thing to bring some awareness to that through photography. Even things like foxes, squirrels in local parks, things that may be can be interpreted as a nuisance sometimes. It can be lovely to photograph them in a different light, to get a lovely photograph of them and actually share that maybe with your community or people you know, just to bring a different kind of awareness to these creatures. I've also personally found that things like squirrels and robins can be some of my favorite subjects to actually photograph because they can be very expressive in the way they move, the way they pose, and the things that they do. And because they're a little bit more okay with humans being around, they're just used to it, they're less afraid, they don't run away so easily. You get more opportunity to photograph them and you don't always have to have such a long lens. So last week we reviewed the Canon RF 100-300 and I used it with a lot of small birds locally in a local kind of wood just around the corner. It's really just a bit of a park that's expanded out with a bit of woodland around it, which is really, really helpful. But you could use something like a 70 to 200 for a lot of this stuff as well, because you can get in close enough to make that a totally viable option. So you don't have to have some massive telephoto lens. That's kind of another advantage of shooting some of this stuff, is that you don't have to have a huge kit bag to be able to go and photograph these creatures. You can just head out with your camera and something like a 70 to 200. I even had some great results using a 135 millimeter prime lens, which I'm really pleased about. So how should you photograph local wildlife subjects like this? Well, the first thing you need to get is a location. Now this can be a local park, that's gonna be one of your easiest spots to go to. A local pond, that's definitely gonna attract lots of different birds. Or if you have local woods, that can be fantastic as well. That's a great option. Otherwise, it's just about really trying to slow yourself down as you walk around maybe if you walk with a dog or if you just take a walk around your neighborhood and look out for those tiny birds darting around, maybe in the trees, maybe in the bushes. A great way right now at this time of year to find them is to listen out for them as well because they're chirping, they're going crazy 
and that's a great signal that there are some nearby. This is all about being patient and observant when you're looking out for this kind of stuff. Wildlife photography can sometimes be such a waiting game, and really the more you slow yourself down, the easier it's actually gonna be. So for example, getting some of these photos, I really was taking my time very slowly strolling through my local park, my local woods, to try and find these birds. And the slower I went, the more comfortable the birds were coming near me. And that made it a lot easier to get those shots. The same goes for creatures like squirrels or foxes or really anything like that. If you start moving fast, if you start being loud, you are gonna frighten them. You're gonna scare them away, they're gonna run off. And it's gonna be harder to get that shot. But if you're moving slow, you're taking your time and you're really keeping an eye out for what's around you, you're gonna make your life a lot easier. Now, like I've said, patience is absolutely key. So when you get to that situation where you do have creatures around you, take your time, check your settings before you take the shot and try and track them if they start to fly away. Now that can be a little bit difficult, especially with the small birds, they can move very quickly and they're not very big. And especially if you're in woodland, that can be a little bit hard, but just do your best to lock on and actually track with your camera and lens. If you can do that, you're gonna increase that skill and that's gonna make it easier when you do go out looking for you know, hawks and all kinds of interesting wild birds right out in the deep woods. A pond or a lake is great for that because you're definitely gonna get birds there and they're going to move around and fly and you can practice tracking them in flight as well. So that is always a great one. Look out for any kind of local, pond, lake, even the sea can be great, even though realistically you're gonna be photographing seagulls in that situation, not always the best subject, but they're not bad. I still like photographing seagulls and it's great practice for other times as well. You wanna be using really probably a nice bright aperture and then a nice fast shutter speed just to really freeze that movement and also let as much light in as you can since of course you're using a very fast shutter speed. Don't worry too much about ISO as well. Bump that up. You wanna make sure you're exposing properly so that you're not coming away with a dark photo. Of course you can brighten it in post later, but you might end up introducing noise and sometimes it's just better to lean into it, shoot with that higher ISO, get the right exposure, and really come away with a nice photo. And don't forget to look in your garden as well, not just for the big creatures, not just for the birds, but for the little creatures as well. If you have a macro lens, this is a great way to practice with that. You will always find little insects, little creatures all over the place that you can photograph, you can practice with your macro lens, and it's a totally different type of wildlife photography. It's something that can really draw you in because it can be so interesting to get those shots and it's a little bit of a challenge. So that's definitely something to consider as well. Yes, you might have birds in your garden, that can be great. You might have all kinds of different creatures, but don't forget to look out for those small ones as well. This is all stuff that means quite a lot to me, to be honest. I, I love photographing these kind of local creatures that we all share our space with. I think it's, it's a really nice thing to go and do for a lot of different reasons, and it helps you grow as a photographer as well. I'd love to know if you have any other tips or if this is something you enjoy to do as well. Let me know in the comments. That's always super interesting. If you have any particular favorites of local wildlife near you that you like to photograph. Otherwise, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Full list of all the stuff we use for these photos down in the description as well. I'll see you next time. Time. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.